So now we've looked at our electoral system and how that determines who gets into Parliament. But what does this mean for how our country is run? And who makes the day-to-day -day decisions on what is best for New Zealand? First things first, we should define what we mean by the term government. The Oxford Dictionary defines government as the group of people who are responsible for controlling a country or state. That's a pretty good general definition. And how this looks is different in just about every country. In New Zealand and many other countries, you may hear government being used interchangeably to refer to two different things. Technically, it refers to the state of New Zealand, including parliament, the courts, the queen, the ministries, and whichever parties are currently in charge. However, most commonly in ordinary usage, people use it to refer to whichever parties, either through a majority vote or minority coalition, currently have the most seats in parliament and effectively run the country. For example, the government of early 2020 is Labour, with NZ First and Greens. In New Zealand, our state government is separated into three parts the executive, legislature, and judiciary. All three parts are important, and we'll talk about each. To avoid one part of government taking over, we'll just call it an authoritarian government, there's a system of what we call checks and balances in our laws to maintain a balance of powers. However, in saying that, because we live in a representative democracy, the members of parliament that we vote in represent us, and we're a big fan of the power of the people here in New Zealand. As such, there's something called parliamentary sovereignty, which means that parliament's democratic laws reign supreme. Jacinda, the queen, or the court can't just invent a new law that bans people from dressing this good. Otherwise, I'd be in serious trouble. <laughs> you may be asking yourself, well, what does each branch of government do? And if they're separate, how does anything get done? Surely we should just let Jacinda take the wheel and she'll be right. Isn't this system of government kind of like John Key's three-way handshake? Well. In this case, it does work just fine, because they each have their unique responsibilities and powers separate from each other. And this is what's commonly referred to as the separation of powers. Before we start arguing the pros and cons of this system, let's delve a little deeper and break down exactly what each part does. The executive. This is what we often refer to as the government, and it's headed by the prime minister. The executive is responsible for making day-to-day -day decisions on how and what New Zealand should spend its money on. It brings proposed laws before Parliament and decides what policies to put in place. We pretty much vote for the executive in the general election, where our votes correspond to how many seats each party gets in Parliament. The parties or parties working together that get the most votes form the executive. The executive is made up of the Prime Minister and Cabinet Ministers, who are senior members of those parties. They sit at the top of the beehive and charge. The executive also includes the ministries, which are run by those ministers, as well as things like the police and the New Zealand Defence Force. In contrast to the US, which is a federal government, New Zealand is a unitary government. This means that we have one central government running the whole country. And we have a few councils dealing with the day-to-day -day operations of specific regions. This is because New Zealand is small enough to officially run itself, rather than the US, which is so big that they're split into multiple states, each with their own government. Is that even more efficient though? Who knows? The legislature. Put simply, this is made up of all the MPs in Parliament. The main role of the legislature is to make new laws. And this is usually done by debating a proposed law, known as a bill. And then they vote on whether or not to pass it. The legislature are also responsible for holding the executive government accountable and voicing the ideas of the New Zealand public. This means that if you wanted to ban NZQA, Although unlikely, you could write to your local MP and ask them to raise it for debate in Parliament. The judiciary. This is New Zealand's court system. It is the responsibility of court judges to interpret and apply the laws passed by Parliament. They do this by hearing legal cases and deciding on an appropriate outcome. The courts can also review the actions of the executive government to check that they are also following the law. Even if you are the Prime Minister, you can be busted for doing dodgy stuff. So the big question is, is this a good political system? Well, to understand why New Zealand uses this system, we need to take a brief look at the weird and wacky system our American friends use. At a fundamental level, the federal US government also has an executive, legislature, and judiciary. But this is where the similarities end. Where New Zealand's legislature consists of a unicameral parliament, which means there's just one parliamentary chamber, the US legislature, otherwise known as Congress, is a bicameral parliament. This means it's split into two parts, the Senate and the House of Representatives. To pass new laws, both of these chambers must approve the new law. 
confused yet? Basically, this is supposed to prevent one political group from gaining too much power. But in practice, this can create a world of trouble when the majority in each of these chambers are politically opposed, as it becomes very difficult for any new laws to be approved. So it may come as no surprise that political decisions are made much quicker here in New Zealand. This is great when laws need to be urgently put in place, like when semi-automatic weapons were outlawed after the Christchurch terror attack of 2019. However, as the political parties in power can dramatically affect how the country is run, if these parties have a majority of members in parliament, they can determine what laws get passed on their own. So what do you think? Is our system of government the best for our country? Or could we have something better? So in this video, we've covered the executive, aka the government, the legislature, or our MPs who make up the rest of government, and finally the judiciary or our court systems. This trio of structures are the building blocks of how laws and decisions are made in New Zealand. I hope you enjoyed that video. It's part of our course on New Zealand government and politics. If you want to check out the whole course, absolutely free, go to studytime.co.nz politics.